Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. Today, I want to talk about the apparitions, the purported apparitions of Our Lady at Ezquioga in the Basque Country in Spain. These apparitions took place in, well, they began in 1931. Maybe you've never heard of them, Ezquioga, the apparitions there. Probably you haven't heard of them. There's not much on English about these apparitions and probably for good reason, because they have been condemned by the church, both locally and by the Holy Office itself. I think it was in the reign of Pope Pius XI that the apparitions received a condemnation from the Vatican. I'm going to look at why. I'm going to look at what happened at this strange sounding place in the northern uh, northeastern Spain. I'm going to give you a little bit of information about why they were condemned and how the Ezquioga apparitions demonstrate the evil, the good, the human, the divine, the angelic. All these things can be combined in one set of apparitions and we can take this information and apply it to places like Garabandal, Medjugorje and other apparitions. Okay, so let's go back to the beginning of these apparitions. We are in 1931, and in Spain, there has recently been a declaration of the Second Republic. There's a new Republican government in Spain, just a week before the apparitions begin at Ezquioga. So a week before, this new Republican government has come in power, and it's a Republican government that's headed by a man who is pretty Marxist in outlook. He's no fan of the Catholic Church. He famously quote, says that Spain has ceased to be a Catholic country. Manuel Athania was his name. Um, he's a man that isn't particularly strong in the Catholic faith, and eventually there will be a reaction against him and his program, his vision for Spain when we get the Spanish, the dreadful Spanish Civil War that begins a little bit later in that same decade. So the backdrop to the apparitions beginning in 1931 is this new beginning of the Second Republic in Spain. The monarch has left the country. There's already in Spain, there's different regions in Spain with the Basque country, as it is today, having a very nationalist element to it, like Catalonia as well, a very nationalist element there. So we have a set of apparitions taking place in a nation in Spain that has already got a kind of separatist mentality and its own uh, historic history and tradition. We've had political turmoil. We've had, obviously, the First World War. And in Europe, there are fears of the beginnings of a possible Second World War. And obviously, communism in Russia, it's the communist influence in Spain that has a lot of people worried, a lot of people concerned. The links between this new Second Republic in Spain, are there links to socialism? Are there links to Freemasonry? All of this is in the backdrop uh, when the apparitions begin in Esquioga. Additionally, there's the fact that we've got a rural society which is deeply religious. Spain is deeply religious, or large parts of Spain are deeply religious, and there's a great devotion to the apparitions at Lourdes, which aren't too far from Esquioga. Esquioga is a village, was a village of 700 people, and it was on the road leading to France. It was on the road leading to France, and people would go there on pilgrimages to Lourdes. Fatima wasn't really that well known, and that's all the way on the other side of the country, but Lourdes is what people were focusing on. And so people knew about these apparitions at Lourdes, and there had been other little apparitions in Spain at this time also. I read one source recently that was saying in the 20s and 30s in Spain, there were little apparitions popping up all over the place. It seemed like Our Lady was appearing all over the place to all kinds of people in Spain. And this is all the backdrop for these huge, enormous apparitions at Esquioga. Okay, so how do the apparitions begin? The apparitions begin with two visionaries. There's initially a brother and a sister who see or claim that they have seen our Blessed Lady. We have Antonia and Andres. Uh, Antonia, the girl, is age 11. Her brother is seven years old. And they are, they are, it's the girl first. Antonia is walking to go and collect some milk. She's got a, 
a flask or something or a jug that she's going to collect some milk i don't think she's going to the cows probably she's going to a shop barn or something where she's going to be given the milk and she's walking along the pathway and then on the pathway she encounters her brother her little brother andreas and together they're walking along and they then all of a sudden the girl she pauses and she kneels because she's seen our lady and she says out loud the virgin mary and as she she gestures and says the virgin mary to her brother he also sees Our Lady. And there she is by an oak tree. Uh, maybe at, at Fatima, Our Lady, like the, the little oak tree, the holm oak tree. And here, it's a full-size oak tree. Our Lady isn't standing on top of it. She seems to be standing by it. And it is Our Lady, Our Lady of Sorrows. It's the sorrowful mother who they're seeing. Our Lady with a, with a veil, with tears streaming down her face. The sorrowful mother is the the guys the um, name under which they see our lady that's the description when they tell their parents when they tell the priest of how our lady appeared everyone says oh this is this is a sorrowful mother and so that's the beginning of the apparitions the 30th of june 1931 it's a mountainside town a beautiful town in a valley with some Beautiful. It's in many ways similar to Garabandal, some of the some of the scenery nestled in a different set of mountains, but quite similar in character and in lifestyle as the apparitions of Garabandal. So these two children see Our Lady. Our Lady doesn't say anything, but they feel pulled into prayer and they pray. They pray Hail Marys, they pray Our Fathers, they pray other little prayers that they know. And they pray in their own native language, the Basque language. They pray in that native language to them. And the next day, they return. And the next day, and the next day. Their parents don't really believe them. But gradually, more people begin to attend. And by the end of the week, seven days in, you've already had you've already had thousands of people thousands of people in fact by the seventh day you've got forty thousand people coming every day to eskyoga and what to do to pray the rosary the children the girl and the boy they seem to think that our lady wants them to pray to pray the rosary and they feel impelled to pray compelled to pray the rosary so that's what they do and a priest in fact leads the rosary out loud and they just pray the rosary together. Okay, so the mom and the dad of this little, uh, these children, Andres and Antonia, the mom and the dad are beginning to get not so happy about their children becoming the center of attention. And they say, you're not going out. You're not going out. You're not seeing our lady anymore. And so those two children then fade into the background. The initial seers at Eskioga, this uh, brother and sister, they fade into the background. We hear nothing more about them because their parents decide enough is enough. You're not going out to see Our Lady anymore. And so they don't. They're inside. But people are coming, right? The last night that the children appear, the brother and sister, there's 40,000 people, maybe even 70,000 by that night. A week in, 70,000. And it's picking up every day, day after day, more people. And so even though on the eighth day, the brother and sister don't appear, another girl claims to have seen Our Lady. And then the next day, another. And over the course of the second week, we enter into what is known as the second phase of the apparitions, or people seem to view as the second phase of the apparitions at Eskioga. The first phase is this silent Madonna, a bit like Our Lady of Knock. Our Lady is standing there and she's crying and she's praying. How does she appear? The sorrowful mother, sometimes she's holding her son, sometimes she appears on her own and she's holding the rosary or has her hands joined. That's how she appears in those, those that first week of apparitions. The two children, they don't go into any special trance. A lot of the pictures you're going to be seeing on this video are of people looking really weird. 
uh, in weird trance-like ecstasy states. Well, the brother and sister, they didn't have this. They were, as it were, absorbed into the presence of Our Lady. They were looking at her, but they didn't, they, the aspect of their face didn't change. It was more like the children at Garabandal. They were talk. They weren't. They weren't really talking. Even they were looking at Our Lady, absorbed in her presence, and they were praying the Rosary, and that's all that happened under that oak tree. And then afterwards, the second week, the second week, so many people begin attending, more and more people, and we have a couple of children who begin to say, "Oh, Our Lady has appeared to me. I have now seen her," and. This happens during the second week. And then when we get to the next phase, beginning from the third week, it just goes crazy. And there are hundreds of people saying that they've seen Our Lady. In fact, there's 200, over 200 people claiming that they're seeing Our Lady, that they're having visions, they're receiving messages. So in the second week, in the second week when there's another scattering of children that claim to have seen Our Lady. This is when we get some of the prominent seers, the prominent secondary seers of Eskioga. There's a little girl called Benita. Benita is only nine years old and she claims to have seen Our Lady. There's a pilgrimage group from Catalonia and one of the ladies who's leading the pilgrimage, a very pious girl, she claims to have seen Our Lady. And then there are others who are visiting who aren't even locals that go there and they say they've got a message. Okay, and it's in this second period that we get the reason, the beginnings of the reason, why the apparitions were condemned. Okay, so some of the messages that are spontaneously received from the second and third phases when there's more and more people claiming to have seen Our Lady, they concern very political realities so some of the visionaries are saying things like there's a war coming spain is going to be invaded by the communists they're saying things like there's going to be a river of blood running through this valley they're saying there's going to be a great chastisement there are going to be something like missiles shot hitting the towns something like that there's going to be a great monarch who's going to put things in order and think the backdrop of this, Spain has just got rid of its monarch. There's going to be a great monarch coming and, and restoring the Catholic faith to Spain. When the prime minister said space, Spain has now ceased to be a Catholic country. All of this is going on. And then, so, so the Republic, the second Republic does not like Eskioga at this era. And that same politician who I mentioned earlier, the, Prime Minister of the Second uh, Republic, Manuel Athana, he says that um, he says that Eskioga has to be destroyed. Eskioga has to be destroyed. He's worried that he's going to have another Fatima on his hands. Where Fatima, just as Russia was the enemy of Fatima, you know. At Fatima, the Catholic faith is contra Russia. Russia will spread her errors, etc. He's thinking, is this singer Iskioga going to be saying stuff about him? He already sees that these secondary seers are beginning to show an anti-communist, anti-republican, perhaps, attitude. And he's worried. And so he tries to, he does, with the support of the church, because the church doesn't like the apparitions the church doesn't like the apparitions either because they are kind of getting out of control and they're getting hysterical. There are people claiming to have stigmata. There are people lying down on the floor in the shape of a cross claiming that they are going through the passion of Christ. There are individuals there with these prophecies about great changes in the church, political activity. It's a kind of a nightmare for, for a local bishop when you've got up to 100,000 people going to a field every day praying. And, and then not just praying, you get these wild screams of prophecy. Our Lady has said this. It's like some kind of crazy charismatic prayer meeting. People are just bursting out with prophecy and the church is thinking, what on earth is going on? And this is the Eskioga 
that is condemned both by the church locally and by the Vatican, because it's almost like it's like this strange phenomenon that people are all gathered there to pray and they're so caught up in prayer and fervor that not only not only is Our Lady appearing to some people, presumably, the evil one is acting, then there's enthusiasm, pure and simple, stirring people up into thinking that they're believing, that they're seeing things. There's those looking for celebrity and reputation, saying something, getting their own little followers, getting people as their disciples, spreading their messages. There were over 200 people claiming to have visions of Our Lady as Kyoga. And of those, of those, even the supporters of Ezkyoga say that probably only 20 were genuine. Oh, even the supporters say that. So the church is very concerned about this phenomenon that's going on. The church cracks down, says people are no longer allowed to gather there to pray. The Republic cracks down, again agreeing people cannot go to pray. By 1933, over a million people have visited Eskyoga. The thing has got huge and the church and the state is doing its best to completely obliterate the existence of the apparitions from this point. They're getting books burned publicly about the apparitions. They're saying that it's a work of the evil one. They are they are doing all kinds of things to the even after the change in government, after the civil war and Franco is in power, there's concern about the apparitions. Um, in the Nationalist Party, because they begin to think, is this a Basque separatist apparition? You know, because some of the people linked to the apparitions had fought for the Republic. Some of them hadn't, some had. Um, it was in an area that was controlled by the Republic in the Civil War. And in the revival of the Catholic faith, the victory of the Catholic faith after the Spanish Civil War, the church has no interest in novelties, in, in crazy mystical phenomena apparitions where there are all these weird prophecies about a great monarch returning and about communism spreading its errors. The church doesn't want to know about it. And Franco uh, and his military dictatorship is happy to enforce this decision of the Catholic Church. That Eskioga is a fraudulent apparition and needs to be crushed. The guy that wrote, the priest I should say, who wrote a beautiful book, uh, quite a balanced book on Eskioga, looking at it in the light of faith and reason, he had his book burnt in public and he was imprisoned. In the time of uh, Franco, Many of, and also earlier on, many of the visionaries were put in psychiatric hospitals, many spending years in psychiatric hospital. One account I've read says that a new hospital was made in the area, especially for people who had been affected by, as they saw it, the Eskyoga phenomenon. So there are these repercussions, uh, these big repercussions on anyone who's promoting, supporting the apparitions there. And so by the time of the 1990s, it's basically forgotten about. Who talks about Eskioga? That a million people ventured there from all across Europe, from England even, traveled to see these apparitions at Eskioga. Royalty of Europe went there, influential writers, uh, popular uh, priests, prelates, they went there in the days of the apparitions for a short period when before it was condemned by the church okay so a few little conclusions number one the first apparitions to those two children are different from the second set of apparitions clearly the first set of apparitions are quite likely genuine the silent madonna who's weeping why is she weeping is she weeping because of the sins of the spanish people or is she weeping because of the sins they've been afflicted by. That was one of the questions in the days of those apparitions. Why is she weeping? Is she weeping over us or because of us? She was weeping, obviously, because there was this impending destruction that Spain was going to experience. Our Lady, in one of the early apparitions, although not to the two initial seers, 
Our Lady held a sword in one hand and a rosary in the other. And to me, Eskyoga, I think, essentially was the Cabejo of Spain. The Cabejo of Spain. You know, the apparitions in Rwanda, Cabejo, Our Lady of Cabejo, where she warned them about the coming genocide. I think Eskioga was, was like that for Spain. Our Lady was showing a deeply divided nation the two alternatives, the rosary or the sword. And some of the children, I think you have to say genuine prophecies from some of the children and seers. Some of the sayings from Benita in particular were are very striking and they seem to have been you know, they seem to be authentic. Some of the things that, that she said in the days of the apparitions, you know, she said that um, communists would soon enter Spain. They had begun to do evil. And there are many blind do not realize the chastisement will come through communism. The fountain of graces flows day and night from our Lord's sacred heart. We should respond to those graces and he will reward us. That's what she said. Um, also, she spoke about churches would soon close, great atrocities would be committed against religion. There is loads of stuff on impending chastisements of the church, particularly in Spain, of persecution. And that's exactly what happened in the terrible Spanish Civil War. Some of the other of Benita's prophecies, you know, they get weird because they're about the great monarch. And she was a little girl aged nine. What's strange about Benita is one of the books, we don't know what happened, I don't know what happened to those two original seers. I think they just went off into obscurity, probably got married, lived normal lives, lived as pious Catholics. Benita, in one of the books I read about these apparitions, it says that she became anti-church, anti-priest really, and she, although she attended mass occasionally, she felt that she had a direct link to Our Lady and that she didn't need to go to mass. So may, I mean, maybe that whole thing puts a complete cloud over anything to do with Benita. Some of the other purported visionaries went into convents. Some of them got married. Some of them died early deaths because that was that era of history. Some died in the Civil War even. I think still that the apparition, that, that picture of Our Lady with the sword or the rosary, it was particularly relevant to Spain on the verge of a terrible civil war. So to conclude, the apparitions at Ezkioga, initially to two children, a brother and a sister, a silent Madonna, a sorrowful Madonna, who's calling people through her actions and through this impulsion to pray the rosary together. It becomes something completely different. People starting to shout out prophetic utterances, then people doing all kinds of weird things, maybe mortification, maybe saying they've got the stigmata, levitating, giving prophecies, giving predictions, catastrophic, apocalyptic predictions, things that come from the tradition. I mean, the great monarch is in the tradition already and people are bringing that out of the tradition. Talking about Russia spreading her errors, stuff from Fatima. There's a whole mixing pot. And I think this is important because it tells us a little bit about apparition mania. And we've seen this in Medjugorje. The number of individuals who go to Medjugorje and then say they too have seen Our Lady. In fact, in fact, one of the so-called seers at Medjugorje actually said this was going to happen, that many people that come to Medjugorje will also see Our Lady there and will go back to their own countries and be like visionaries. This has happened. I, I could do a video on this one. Maybe I will on the future. The number of people that have had, I think we might call them copycat, copycat apparitions. This is a huge thing that's happened in Medjugorje. And Eskyoga was the Medjugorje of its time. We began with two children. Thankfully, their parents pulled them out of the limelight and those two pious children remained just two pious individuals. But then you got other parents that were keener and happier for their children to hog the limelight, to be giving prophetic utterances, to attract a following. 
And there was a social class thing involved in this. A lot of the visionaries were peasant children, milkmaids, cleaners, servants. And all of a sudden, you get a vision of Our Lady, and all of a sudden, the gentry of Europe, of the area, are interested in you. Maybe you get a, you get a marriage prospect. In one of the books I read on Eski Yoga, it said that there was also an impurity dimension to things, in as much as that, um, what was the quote? The quote was something like, we do not know if the seers were all genuine, but we do know that after nine months, there were many Virgin Marys with a baby Jesus. You know, one of the, one of the cynics says that, or says that that was a reality, that there were so-called visionary girls having impure relations with guys. Um, who knows? Well, that did happen because there were so many so-called visionaries and there was evil one was involved there enthusiasm was involved there you had a million people over a short space of time turning up at this rural part of spain so esquioga is a lesson for us about what can take place at apparition sites it's largely been forgotten about i don't know if i'm going to be the first video in english about esquioga maybe i'm not but i'm going to be one of the first there's some fantastic videos in Spanish about this. There's a really wonderful one that I'll put uh, with a link below because it's got some great pictures, excellent information. And there's a really wonderful, interesting story that that, that man's film ends with telling us how there was a little chapel finally built in Ezquioga. I think he says in 2004 uh, in the place near the, near the oak tree, not the pines like Garabandal, but the oaks of Eskioga. Near the oak trees, they build a chapel, finally, with images of how the Virgin appeared. But then the train company, Renfe, they want to build a high-speed train link. And so they demolish the sanctuary. But then, in reparation, I guess, probably a legal obligation, the train company themselves, Renfe, pay for a nice new chapel to be built with its own Stations of the Cross. I'm kind of thinking I might go there next time I'm in Spain. There's more and more places that I've got to visit when I'm in Spain, more unknown minor apparitions of Our Lady there. So that's been the apparitions of Our Lady at Ezkioga. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.